welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Well, the theme for today's episode is maybe second time's the charm. Eh, it doesn't sound so promising. <laughs> I hate to be mean to companies, but I swear sometimes, you know, these new guitars do not get shipped as securely as they should be. In case you missed that last episode, I had recently purchased a Les Paul Studio Shred for somebody via my new Guitar Day program. If you're interested in buying a new guitar at a very slight discount, as well as supporting the channel and potentially even getting it reviewed if it's a model I'm interested in, you can visit my website and it's on that very first page, just a little bit down right there in red text. A lot of people can't find it, it's just right there. But this is that replacement studio shred for the last one that kind of had the uh, crack kind of by the nut. It wasn't a complete lost cause, but you know, when you're paying brand new prices, uh, you better get a guitar that has no flaws. One, two, three, four, and a fifth back latch. Watch, it's like a purple Les Paul or something. Nope. Here we go. So Les Paul Studio Shred getting some deja vu vibes here. It almost looks like the exact same one. So we'll go ahead and give this one a once over, make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. These are a Floyd Rose Les Paul Studio with black binding on the neck. Um, they've got the satin finish on the front, which means that they'll kind of do that uneven wearing. So this one looks to be in okay shape here. <sighs> This one's got a lot of that red fuzzy stuff going on. Uh, let's take a look up here. I don't know if this one's gonna fit the bill or not either. It almost looks like there is a small chip right there at the factory. Oh, but hey, this one's actually a 2020 model on the made on the 17th day of the year. Cool. All right, now we move on to the sponsor of today's episode. I, I don't have a real sponsor, so I just thought I'd let you guys know. A lot of people say, where do I get a Troglis t-shirt? They're on Teespring. I have a few different shirts available. Like there's a really cheap $20 one. I honestly don't suggest those as much. They come in a bunch of fruity colors, which is the main appeal to that. But spending just that little bit more on that tri-blend, those shirts are very comfortable. So if you're actually getting something that you plan to wear for a while, I would suggest those guys. So if you're interested in those, I'll put a link in the pinned comment. But next we have a, a package from Fender. That's right, somebody named Lee Martin at Fender Musical Instruments Corporation sent me this big box. <laughs> and when the FedEx guy delivered it today, I was waiting for the UPS and he, he had dropped this off. So I went and picked it up and it's like, this is literally an empty box. Is somebody trying to scam me? <laughs> because I thought maybe it was a guitar that I had purchased on Reverb or something. But then, then once I saw this from Fender, it's like, oh, okay. So when I unboxed my Tom Morello Stratocaster, I was looking for my Soul Power decal, you know, looking in all these tiny little crevices. And here we come to find out it's this giant thing. So <laughs> I was looking in all the wrong places. Apparently mine just did not get one somehow. It made it out of the factory without the decal. So it was definitely great to get this because that's the whole point of buying that guitar in my opinion. So now I can officially do this review. I've actually already sold it without the decal, but I'll, I'll go ahead and throw the decal in, even though it would be cool to put that on my Glary <laughs> Stratocaster. It belongs with that guitar. And the last unboxing today, it, it's just my favorite modern Les Paul. Whenever one of these things shows up, I like to grab it because I just love having these things around. Even though they don't last long, I list them on reverb and somebody ends up buying them way too soon for my tastes. Like for my uh, Make Progress Monday series, if I ever get back to doing that, I would love to, you know, get to use one of these guys. So here's a good example of somebody who did not necessarily have like all the best packing materials in the world. But look, you know, it's still very secure. There's not a lot of hard thumping going on. So if you don't have packing material, just grab extra boxes wherever you get boxes, cut them up, use newspapers, whatever it takes to make sure the guitars are safe. My personal favorite is stuffed animals. It always gives you a smile. You can check out the least viewed <laughs> unboxing episode when I went to the thrift store I bought a lot a lot a lot of stuffed animals thinking that oh yeah this will be a funny episode people are gonna love this nobody watches it <laughs> oh well let's go ahead and see what's in here 
Now it's kind of a fun story here, is I got this from, I think it was a shop in Austin, Texas. Yeah, so this wasn't like a, a, a private sale, I don't think. I believe it was a, a pawn shop? Maybe not a pawn shop, but some sort of music store. But I always like buying things from Austin, Texas, because my name's Austin, so it's like, hey, the Austins are all right. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay, so the reason why I picked this one up is it's a Buckethead Signature Les Paul. I love these things, right? And somebody has done some freaky modifications to this one. So, th there's a few different ways I could take this. I could hold on to it and wait for the original parts to kind of show up and restore it, which I might do unless somebody's interested in paying top dollar for it as is. But the guy was saying that somebody has replaced the bridge and tailpiece and they've replaced the bridge pickup. I think they've just painted over the original bridge and tailpiece and he could tell somebody was doing top wrapping. I guess now that I look at it, I think those might actually be replaced, but those are easy enough to swap out. I think they were trying to go for a, an all white vibe, which that's all fine and dandy, right? But you know, why mess with Buckethead signature thing? And then up here we have red Spurzel tuners, which I I don't believe those require any additional routing or anything. They might have one of those pilot things that drills into the headstock. But I'm hoping if I found a set of shawlers that that would all be covered up. We'll have to see on that. Ooh, it looks like our truss rod cover screws have been swapped out. Let's hope that is not signs for, you know, a maxed out truss rod. <laughs> Let's go check on that real quick. Oh, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. This is my least favorite part of my job. Taking off the truss rod cover screws to, to find that the rod's been maxed out, somebody's been abusing it. Nothing wrong with that. But the lacquer underneath there has aged more so than the rest. Must be have something to do with the plastic. That's an interesting choice that somebody put spurzels on these though. But other than that, this thing's actually in pretty okay shape. I mean, you got a little bit of browning right here. That's nothing too bad. Couple of dings. Okay, it looks like somebody at one point in time had a sticker over here. And you got some light buckle rash. I guess the more and more I look at it, they've also swapped out the strap buttons. This is a, a, a good condition one. Honestly, you do not have too much finish checking on this, which is kind of rare. Most of these will have quite a bit going on. This was definitely a good find. You got a little bit going on there. That's very common on these guys. Now, as long as the neck's okay, we'll be okay. Yeah, we're all set. I'm happy with that purchase. At least they went with a double white pickup. I mean, it's not the 500T. Yeah, that might be a little bit tricky to source. Your best bet for getting that original one would be buying one of those baritone SGs and taking it out of that. But they do show up occasionally. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. We'll figure it out. But nothing else new coming in this week, I don't think. I'm just trying to get caught up on all these other reviews. So let's go ahead and see what I'm shipping out today. I've actually already packed up two things. We'll learn about that here in a minute, but we got to get this other one around because USPS is going to be here to pick up these guitars and those two little packages very soon. You're probably thinking, huh, USPS. I don't really ship with them as much as I used to. I used to just always pay the premium because I liked how fast it would get everywhere. I was just petrified of using UPS. But what helped me get over that fear was the reverb shipping protection. But unfortunately, reverbs really jack the price of that service up because you're basically guaranteed a payout as long as you, uh, you know, ship it properly. But recently I had UPS reach out to me and give me essentially the exact same rates and better insurance that does pretty much the same thing. So that's why I use UPS. It's the cheapest and honestly, it gets to places pretty quick. Basically everything I used to like about the post service uh, has just kind of gone out the window lately. They used to be really inexpensive for express mail shipments. We're talking like 100 to 150 bucks, so I would gladly do that on guitars. But unfortunately lately that's gone up to like 250 and more. It's like, ah, man, everything about the post office that used to be good is just not so good anymore. <laughs> But the reason why I have to use the post office for this one is this guitar is actually going to Japan, but not Japan, Japan. So if anybody ever contacts you asking you to ship to an APO, FPO, that is a military address. So you're technically not shipping it internationally, but you are. 
but the rates are just the same as like if you were shipping to like California or something. So I kind of quoted this one out. I think it came up to be like 90 bucks. So that's definitely the cheapest you'll ever be able to ship a guitar to Japan for. But that's enough rambling about uh, shipping and stuff, even though I'm sure some of you find that interesting if you don't do a lot of shipping. But this is a 68 gold top reissue. I've actually reviewed one of these once before, but I fell in love with that guitar. There's actually an issue with the truss rod on the first one, so I sent it back. So when this one showed up on Reverb, it's like, yes, I would like to have one of these again for a little bit. And this one was equally as good. I had plugged it in when I was doing a review and demo of a different guitar. And, and there's just something about the 68s that I particularly like. I am definitely a P90 guy, I've come to find out. But let's go ahead and uh, finish up the pack job here on this guy and get it on its way to Japan. Just to give you guys an idea, that was only $47 to ship that, plus all the insurance costs, which was like twice the price of that. But the uh, next two things I have to send on with USPS today were some parts. Unfortunately, the packing up footage of this one got corrupted. So thanks, GoPro. But what's in here is a double cream dirty fingers pickup, which is really rare because it can actually be coil split. It has double leads coming out of it. That only came in the GK55 and the SG exclusive. So the GK55 that I ended up reviewing, somebody wanted it without the pickups because the pickups are like where most of the value in that guitar is. And I just happened to have an SG exclusive that needed one pickup restored. So somebody contacted me. I guess they have an Explorer. The neck pickup is a double cream. They wanted something to replace the EMG that was in the bridge position. So they asked me if I had any vintage double creams and I just happened to have this. They definitely paid a premium for it because you know it's a really rare pickup specifically for those couple of guitars but that'll restore that Explorer with an era correct part though not necessarily the correct part. And this guy, Tuners, I forget what guitar I took these off of. It's the Top Lock Rovers that come stock on the Les Paul Goddess. I hate these things and the reason why I ended up taking them off is because one of them actually broke. So I just listed these for parts. I mean, somebody probably needs a spare and they ended up selling for about 40 bucks. But now we got a couple for UPS yet today as well. And starting that UPS journey is this guy. I never actually ended up doing the review of the Lead 3. There's just so much that I'll take priority of this guy. But this guitar has been featured in more episodes than any other guitar on my channel. Pretty much every Rock or Not episode, if you look in the background sitting on this chair, you'll see this guitar. I, I did the review of the Lead 2. That was a Fender sponsored review. And you know, after doing that, it's like, ah, do I really want to make the exact same video again? It's just, you have different pickups in here. So we at least got to see it in person. I mean, I guess I could pick one up again at a later date if you guys really want to see it, but they sent these out to a bunch of other YouTubers. So there's other videos out there. So I might as well create something that's not out there. Now our last one to pack up is kind of a, an emotional parting. You know, it, it took forever to find this guitar. And it's yeah. such a special guitar. They're, they're so rare, so desirable. You can't find them even if you have the money. And when they do show up, they sell fast. What is in here? The Red Sparkle Top Deluxe. I'm sorry guys, I didn't have time to review this one. Maybe one, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I couldn't send this thing out without doing a review. It's recorded, I just have to edit it up. But I've gotta say, this thing, I'm so happy it spent some time with me because it needed some tender loving care. So when I got this, it was really just worn out. Like it had not been properly cared for probably for the past like 10 to 15 years because the strings were all corroded. The frets were all rusty. The finish had some like wear spots on it. And all this thing needed was, you know, some TLC. I made the frets look perfect again, cleaned and conditioned that fretboard, polished the whole guitar head to toe. That's not something I normally do, but something this special deserved it. And now this thing looks brand new. I'd listed it on Reverb because I figured, ah, uh, the higher end stuff will probably take a little bit longer to sell. But this thing sold in 20 minutes. So <laughs> you had to be quick for this one, but we'll see the full review and demo very soon. 
but beautiful sparkle top. After polishing it, all the sparkles just came to life on this guy. And I just happened to have some of the era correct parts that this guitar needed, like a correct toggle switch tip. I gave it better strap buttons. And I had a era correct case for it instead of that crappy SKB. I mean, it's not 100% correct. It's slightly later 70s, but it still works for it. And we actually have one last minute pack up, which is kind of funny because the UPS guy is supposed to be here in about 10, 15 minutes. So we'll see if I can catch him because it just sold. So inside here is a 84 SG standard. I never did a review on this one because I've done tons of 80s SGs. And what happened with this one is there was an undisclosed issue on it. So I just decided to keep it and sell it as is because it was kind of a hassle to return it. I had had it for a while anyways before I noticed it. So I sold it as is. It took about, I think, what, four months or so. But it is a pretty cool SG and a nice player if you're going to keep it in a nice studio environment. I was basically just going to use this in the SG exclusive video that we were kind of talking about earlier to compare them. But I think I have a different SG that I haven't listed for sale yet that I can also use that for. So let's go ahead and get this one packed up and sent out. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.